Welcome to the third installment of a little segment we call Holy Sh**. And today, it really is a holy moment, isn't it? Because this right here, my friends, this is a battery the size of a man. And this right here is all the other crap that goes with it. Oh yeah, and did I mention it cost us $17,000? Holy TunnelBear is the easy to use VPN service that lets you use the web as though you are in one of 20 different countries. Learn more and try TunnelBear for free at the link in the video description. So we'll kick things off with what the unboxing experience would be like for a $17,000, okay, that's Canadian rupees, mind you, but it's still a lot of money, a $17,000 battery backup. This is the PW12S12K-PD from Eaton, and it is part of their 9170 Plus line of formerly known as Powerware Uninterruptible Power Supplies. This baby right here, is a 12 unit chassis and you can actually fill those units with power modules or battery modules depending on whether you want to supply more power to the items that you want to back up or whether you want the runtime to be longer when the power goes out. So the one that we have is a 12 kilovolt amp unit capable of delivering about 10 thousand watts of power because we have filled it up with I believe it is four of their 3,000 kilovolt amp units and then we have filled the entire rest of this 12 12 bay chassis with battery backups allowing us to have this puppy run at full load for I think something to the tune of uh, 26 or 28 minutes under full freaking 10,000 watt load or at half load for about an hour before it actually needs to engage the software mechanisms that it has to safely shut down all of our server components. You might be asking yourself, Linus, you guys had a bunch of UPS units. What the devil happened with all of those? Why are you getting an additional tower UPS to, uh, to take their place? Well, we had some issues with the GE ones. Uh, they were refurb units, the batteries, problem, something, etc., etc. Anyway, we're not using them anymore. And uh, Johnny Chu, our networking guru guy, recommended this. So we bit the bullet and went, you know what? With all the data loss scares we've had lately and the issues that we've had with power outages in this area, we've had some serious storms. We are not gonna screw around anymore. We're getting a proper, proper backup unit. And this, my friends, is what something like that might look like. Yeah, I think this is just, just the chassis. So it's actually bolted onto this pallet. No, it is not. It is not bolted onto the pallet, so we should be able to remove it fairly easily. But let's take a look at the rear of it first. Okay, so at the top we've got a serial port as well as a couple of bays for network modules, one of which we got so it'll be able to communicate over the network. Then we've got 12, and these each have their own 20 amp uh, reset switches in them. So we've got 12 uh, L1430R outlets. Then we move down into the freaking like heavy freaking duty stuff, and we've got three L630R outlets. So those are these three prong twisty locky ones right here. And finally, we have three more of the L1430R quad quad prong outlets going on here. So these puppies are for like super high draw 240 volt equipment that can leverage the efficiency of the higher voltage in order to, well, be more efficient. So you, you might find this in, in like very high end server gear. We will mostly be using these guys. Okay, so the first thing Johnny the network guy and I are gonna do is uh, move you bastard. Should we twist, twist it? Twist it this way, yeah. I think we should twist it. Move. Okay, awesome. So this gives us a look at the front. So here's where the, uh, the 12 like bay module things go in. So you can actually see the interfaces at the back here. They have what look like, like kind of smaller ATX power supply connectors on them. And then they have what looks like about a 24 or 26 pin um, likely proprietary connector back here. And then a couple more little guys right here. So the cool thing about this modular system is you can actually put batteries or power modules anywhere you want 
And then the back plane at the back sorts the whole thing out. And you can actually even daisy chain multiples of these together. However, I really don't think we're gonna need more than 10,000 watts in our server room um, for the foreseeable future. Look at this user's guide. I mean, I don't blame them. I mean, this thing is not your simple plug into the wall and then hump de up. I guess it works just fine. In fact, with the 12,000 kilovolt amp unit that we've got, we had to wire up a completely separate 80 amp breaker and then we have to hardwire this guy into that. If you wanna get one of the bigger units, the 12 or the 15 kilovolt amp units, you actually need, here, check this out, or the, uh, the 15 or the 18, you need a 100 amp or a 125 amp breaker. And then you have to have an electrician come in and wire the thing in. I don't even know what these do. <laughs> well, they make that noise, I guess. So here's some more accessories. These are, uh, doodads that go on here. Bah, 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 bah. That's not how they go on, so I probably shouldn't force the issue. That is how they go on. Some of you are probably wondering what the point of something like this is. And here, we'll, we'll walk and talk, we'll walk and talk. So I'll take this over to where it's going. So the point of having a UPS unit that fully loaded is gonna weigh, weigh somewhere in the neighborhood of 600 to 700 pounds is that it will not only, oof, act as a battery backup, but will also actually condition the power that is coming into our server room. So because this is an online double conversion UPS, all of our server gear will be running 100% of the time off of the batteries. And because it uses very, very high quality inverters, that isn't an issue like it would be with a consumer grade UPS. The other benefit of double conversion online UPSs is that in the event of a power outage, there is absolutely zero delay between, oh, wow, thanks Johnny, we don't wanna run over that network cable. There is zero delay once the power goes out when it needs to, when a, when a normal UPS, like a cheapo consumer grade one, would actually have to switch between AC power and battery power, meaning that your equipment is never subjected to that kind of stress which leads us very well to where we're going to be installing it. So Harry Potter thought he was getting an upgrade to his closet when the contractors showed up, but it was all a lie. Harry Potter's closet is now this big. And we are actually going to be sealing the UPS into the now expanded server room, which in addition to its four dedicated 15 amp circuits here, additional 15 amp circuit here also has I believe this is a 100 amp circuit that we had wired in and that we're going to directly attach to the Eaton UPS and then it'll sit right here and plug into all of our gear, bippity bop, just like that. This cardboard is both a blessing and a curse. Nice and slow. Okay, cool. Now I got the weight. Okay. Go ahead and pull the card out. Okay. And that's pretty much that. All right. Check this baby out. So inside this second pallet that arrived today, we are going to find our power units and our battery units, as well as our, what was this, $350 like 100 megabit network card. What a scam. The freaking scam enterprise gear is. Well, because it's proprietary and we uh, decided that we're buttholes. Two skids, oh, they didn't know you were gonna be here, Dennis. They've only got me and Johnny covered. So how many power modules did we get? It was three, right, Johnny? No, four. Four, four, four power modules. I feel like I work at like Fort Knox because I'm moving heavy stuff that costs way too much around. Whoa, that's heavy. Holy crap, okay. Okay, I'll help steer. Hold on. Save the network cable. <laughs> oh, my foot. Okay, I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm good. Yeah, that's fine. That's good for the foot. Okay. This bastard needs to go in there, I guess. So let's just, if you're gonna, you can just test one. Well, we shouldn't load them first, right? We should put it in there first and then load them, right? Sure, yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's do this then. Okay. Let's watch that height. Yeah. We're good. Yay, measuring tape. Go team, measure once, hope for the best. Ooh. Okay. 
Okay, how are we doing now? Perfect, perfect. We're in. No big deal. Okay, so let's start loading up some modules, shall we? Ooh, whoa, okay, I broke a thing. That was quick. Oh, really? It's this clip. Where did it go? Where'd you... Did, did you see it? I heard it trickle down here. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> oh, it's right, it's like, what the hell? Oh, it's this part. Yeah. What the hell, Eaton? I don't even know how these side panels come off. They're like scaled over top of each other. I see it too. What the hell, Eaton? Oh, I got it. You got it? Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. Let's do this. I'm like sweating. Yeah, you all right? I don't know if I'm sweating because it costs so much or because uh, this is heavy. Sure. Oh, yeah, you take the cool stuff. I get to do the stupid batteries. So, this feels like a handle. Oh, cool. Okay, I think I... No, I don't at all, actually. What? Oh, yeah, I see it. Cool. So this... We should do batteries on the bottom, I guess, right? So the batteries plug into these puppies. And then the power modules plug into the other stuff. Uh, what the heck? I can't tell if that's in or not. Oh, it seems to be in. Wow, is that like a zero insertion force connector? That's cool. That'll make the hot swap really easy. So you can actually, you can actually hot swap batteries and power modules at will, assuming that you have enough um, enough extra for the power modules that you're not just overloading the unit when you, you know, pull out all the power modules or whatever. So this is interesting. The cooling actually intakes at the back and then exhausts on this side over here. Oh, that's a good look at, uh, at the guts of this baby here. That's some big copper coils and aluminum heat sinks they got going on in there. Not to mention, you know, the resistors and the, yeah, wow. So, Oh, careful, Johnny. So that is pretty much it. We've got all the power modules loaded in, all the battery modules loaded in, and all that's left is back here. We're gonna take three copper wires from our panel, put them into the back of the unit, plug some extension cords into our servers, and bippity boppity boom, we are ready to rock with our massive 1,000 watt battery backup. And on a totally unrelated note, mass drop. And this is pretty cool. They've got the K7XX limited edition ruby red headphones in addition to all the other cool stuff over at massdrop.com, which by the way, you can check out at the link in the video description. This particular drop though, and it's the same usual concept. The more people buy, the better the price. This is a limited edition of the K7X headphones that I actually reviewed here. The only real difference is that this run uses red accents on the ear cups and the headband. Please note, this is a limited drop with only 1,500 units, so if you want a pair, you're gonna wanna act pretty fast. In terms of spec, it was configured by MassDrop and manufactured by AKG. These are open-backed headphones with very, very large cushiony uh, ear cups. They've got a flat wire voice coil, very motion, two-layer diaphragm, genuine leather headband. Actually, that's really nice. Memory foam ear pads with velour cover uh, they weigh 8.3 ounces. Okay, there's an awful lot of specs in my notes here, many of which are not terribly important. Two-year warranty covered by MassDrop. And if you're ordering from outside the U.S., you can still get it, but please note that your, the distribution will be handled through a third party, so a $25 fee will be assessed to all international orders. So if you want to check this out and get yourself the ruby red pair of K7XXs, just head over to drawdops slash LTT K7XX to see that and all the other awesome stuff that they have on MassDrop. So thanks for checking out this episode of Holy Shit on Linus Tech Tips. If you just liked it, press the dislike button. But if you liked it, hit that like button, get subscribed, and maybe even consider supporting us by buying a cool shirt like this one, um, changing your bookmark on Amazon, one with our affiliate code instructions for which are up there, or even contributing directly through our community forum, which by the way, you can get answers to your questions over there as well. We've got links for all that stuff in the video description. So now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering, hey, what should I watch next? Well, don't miss 
The previous episode of Holy where we checked out the biggest mouse pad we'd ever seen. So, so far we've done biggest SSD, biggest mouse pad, and biggest battery. Let us know what you want to see next in the comments below.